What's going on guys, it's Killer D here with the uh, black Squirtle Squad build for Bleach Immortal Souls. So to start off the video, I am going to go over the Spirit Relic buffs that are going to be important. So for attack specialty characters, it's not going to matter so much because we're not going to have any. For skill specialty characters, we're going to get crit chance and block chance increased by 5%. For defense specialty characters, their block chance is going to increase by 10%. For the second soul relic, the, the back row characters, their damage is going to increase by 10%. This is basically the same thing as you get for having two tiger characters in your formation. For all characters, their damage rate and damage reduction is going to increase by 5%. That's about half of what you get for White Tiger and Black Tortoise. And then lastly, front row characters, their damage reduction rate is going to increase by 10%. So for your front row, they're going to get a 15% increase in damage rate reduction. For your back row, they're going to get 10 plus 5% increase for damage rate. So that's almost the same as having 6 uh, white, white Soul Tiger. Now for the third one, not a lot of people should have this maxed out. So it shouldn't matter as much. But attack specialty characters, like I said, we're not going to have any. For the skill specialty characters, we are going to have two. So it's going to be either crit strength and block strength increased by 7.5. For the defense characters, which is going to be four of them, block strength is going to increase by 15%. And now let's go over to the buffs that you get from the Soul Hall for Black Squirtle Squad. So for six, we are going to get a 20% damage reduction rate increase, 10% block control rate increase, and then the first rate skill of all the characters is going to increase by 12%, which is going to be huge because you can pair that up with some War Souls, like the War Soul of Fury, which is going to increase it by 20%. And then the characters that I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Unahana, who's going to be your heal and rage buff. And then we're going to go with Tessai, who's going to be your reflect damage and attack debuff. We're going to go with Kensei, who's going to be your self heal block. And then your taunt, if it procs. For the back row, we're going to go with Mayuri, who's going to be your poison attacker and paralyze. And then we're going to go with Komamora, who's going to be your high HP attacker, low HP tank. Kyoraku, who's going to be your attacker and then self-heal. So those are going to be the six that I'm going to pick. Now to go over the war souls that I'm going to put on them. Starting off with Unahana, we're going to go with the war soul of the saint. You're going to get attack, defense, and HP increase. Heal rate increased by 20%. For Tessai, you're going to go with the Warsaw Vengeance. He's Reflect, so it makes no, it makes uh, perfect sense to include a Reflect damage rate. Warsaw to him, which is also going to affect the entire front row for two turns. For Kensei, we're going to go with the Warsaw of Courage because it's going to increase the block chance by 20% more heals for Mayuri we got to go with the Warsaw of Shattering because it's going to increase the effect accuracy by 20% and increase his attack and defense by 750 so you're going to get some attack increase defense increase and then your paralyze is going to be able to proc more often for Kuraku I'm going with the Warsaw of the Eye just because 
I want him to do more damage to other characters, specialty types, such as skill and defense. That's why I'm going with this one. He's going to be able to mitigate or ignore 60% of target defense, which is going to be huge. If you And especially if you attack an attack specialty character like Aizen and Urahara and Kenpachi, they're going to feel a lot of pain from this Warsaw. For Kumar, you can also go with the Warsaw of the Eye, but I really want to go with Kyoraku on that one because I just feel that he's going to have more survivability and he's going to have a higher attack chance on it. Now, for Komamaru, he's very versatile because he's a high HP attacker and then a low HP tank. So for attack, like I said, we're going to go with the War Soul of the Eye. Going to give him that extra attack on different types of characters and it's going to help overall. We're, if you're going to go with just straight damage, we're going to go with the War Soul of the Wrath. Which is going to increase damage rate by 16.5%, attack by 1500, crit chance by 15%. If you want to go with increased rage damage, you can go with the War Soul of the Fury, which is going to increase it by 20%, increases attack by 15%, well, 1500%, no, 1500. And then, if you want to make him tankier, like when he has real low HP, I would go with the Warsaw of Armor just because it's going to give the increased damage reduction rate by 16.5% right off the bat. So, you include that with all the buffs that you're going to get, it's going to be an insane amount of damage you're going to be able to reduce just from the start. And then the last one I would pick, but not really, like it's kind of iffy, I would pick the Warsaw Crit. Increases the attack by 1500, crit chance by 20, crit strength by 20. So, I wouldn't really pick that one on him, but that's an option too. So those are going to be the second War Souls that I would pick on these characters. Now, for the third War Soul that I'm going to put on these characters, I'm going to have to go with, with Unahana, I'm going to go with the Soul of the Smolder. Just because when she dies, the back row of the enemy's attack is going to decrease by 15%. So that's going to be a nice attack debuff. And since she's in the front row, she's most likely going to die first. For Tessai, you're just going to stick with the regular um, Warsaw for him. Like his own Warsaw, Sword of Thorns going to increase the reflect damage rate on him um this on top of vengeance on top of his mastery skills and passive can increase it all by a lot more than like 40 percent of damage is going to be reflected back now for kente we're going to go with the soul temper it's going to increase his block chance by 12.5 percent when his hp is greater than 40 percent so right off the bat he's going to be able to have an insane amount of Block chance and heals. For Mayuri, I'm gonna have to go with the Soul of the Giant just because it's gonna increase the block chance of everybody by a certain percentage. This is 3% right now just because the blue, purple could go up to 5 or 7, and then gold can go up to 10. I don't know yet. I'd have to max that out to really test it out, but I'm gonna go with that just to keep the survivability on the team. Now for Yoraku, I'm gonna go with the Soul of the Avatar just because he has the War Soul of the Eye which is gonna ignore defense. This one's gonna give him a chance to ignore defense and as well as the rest of the teammates as well. Now for Komamura, he's very, like I said, versatile. You can build them certain ways that you want. Um, Interesting thing to do is for uh, the Soul of Silence because basically your whole team is going to be defense and skill. So they're going to have a 10% chance to silence and deal 50% more damage. So that's going to be interesting to use, especially for procs. Now, if you want to go with damage, you can use um, 
two you have two options you can go either with the soul of soaring which is going to increase the ally damage rate by six percent and attack by 300 percent and then if you want to increase their rage you can go with the soul of crescent which is going to increase that rage skill damage by six percent plus 250. so those are going to be the war souls that i would use on Akumamora. Now, let's go over their skills. For Unahana, her mastery skill is gonna grant allies in the same role 50 rage. I have her rage awakened, so if you don't have it awakened, it's not as strong, but if you do get it awakened, it's pretty good. It's going to give um, everybody on your team 100 rage and the rage recovery speed is going to increase by 20% for, your, for the whole team. So that's going to be nice, especially for a Black Tortoise team, which has to recover rage by getting hit. So lastly, her passive is Compassion, which is going to grant the back row a major buff. And then when she's alive, the male enemies, which is the majority of the characters as of right now, their rage, it's going to gain 20% slower. So compassion, if you read it right here, it says increase damage rate and damage reduction rate for two rounds. I have her level 47 and the damage rate increases by 28%. Damage reduction rate is increased by 28%. That's an insane buff for her dying. 28% that's huge especially for that back row they're going to be able to survive longer and deal more damage so that's why I have Kyoraku, Mayuri and Komomura on the back row because they're going to be the, the heavy hitters in the team for Tessai his mastery skill is going to have a 50% chance of silence that's going to be helpful for his rage skill attack his deep uh, attack debuff by 12% for a column and then lasts for two rounds. When you awaken it, it gets a lot better. It the attack decreases by 15%, and then the reflect damage actually increases by 28%, which is crazy. His passive is pretty good too. Is when he is alive, his his uh, reflect damage rate increases by a certain percentage. I have him at 39, level 39 right now. His self reflect damage rate is going to increase by 11.8. So that on top of the war souls that we're putting on him, he's going to reflect more than half of the damage that's being sent to him especially when he's close to dying he's gonna send most of it back now for Kensei his mastery skill is pretty important because it's gonna increase his block chance by 20% on top of his war soul it's gonna give him 20% on top of the soul of um Temper that's going to give him an extra 12%. So he's going to be able to, and then the spirit relic, he's going to get 60% of uh, block chance increase. So that's going to be huge. He's basically going to block every hit that's going to be dealt to him. So where you put him in the formation is going to be important. Because you probably want to put him, I would put him behind either Kyoraku or actually you can put him behind any one of them three. But definitely put him. Put him in front of the stronger one. Now his rage is not so important, but he has a 20% chance to taunt and he lowers the target's crit chance by 10%. It's not that important, but PvP it might help out a lot. Who knows? Now Tekken his passive is gonna heal him for 5% of his max AP for every skill he blocks. So skill means mastery skill, rage skill not basic attack but that's a lot of you know it's a good majority of the skills that he's going to be able to just mitigate and heal for now for komamura his mastery skill increases the defense of front row allies by 30 percent it's gonna be that's a nice buff right there his attack to attack special characters, damage is increased by 
After the weapon awakens, damage increases greatly and has a chance of stunning. When he awakens, the chance of stunning is 35%. The highest number I've seen on all characters. Body hardening is going to be a super important passive, so you need to get him 4 star. It's going to be super important. Receives 30% more healing from Unahana when his HP is greater than 50%. His damage rate increased by 35%. That's a big buff right there. Like I said, you can put War Souls that increase the damage rate or a War Soul that increases his Rage skill. So that's why he's kind of versatile. And then his HP is lower than 50%. His damage reduction rate increases by 35%. That's why I put the War Soul the armor on him. Now let's go over to Mayuri. It's going to be, like I said, your attacker, Poison. Paralyze. So, mastery skill, 30% chance to paralyze. With his war sword, it's going to be a 50% paralyze. So, you're going to paralyze someone. With his rage, I have it awakened. I just had to get it because uh, I use him for PvP a lot. So, his, he's going to poison targets, last it for two rounds, and has a 28% chance to paralyze. With the war sword of shatter, it's going to be a 48% paralyze when I max that out. Mad Scientist passive is a pretty interesting one. Basically, when he dies, he revives for a certain percentage of health. Right now, I have my level 62. He's going to heal for 25%. So, that's nice. About a quarter. Last but not least, Kyoraku. So, his mastery skill is going to deal 60% more damage to attack specialty characters and crit chances increased by 40%. Nice. His Rage deals 80% additional damage to attack specialty characters and recovers HP itself equal to 50% of the attack. Now let's go to the passive. He deals additional damage to Soul Society characters, which is a lot of the characters as of right now. His effect reduction increases by 20%, and then his mastery skill which is this one right here, dual blades attack. It's gonna life steal for 40%. So those are gonna be the six for my black squirrel squad. Um, when I max them out, you know, the war souls and all, that's gonna be a pretty dangerous team to um, go against. I definitely wanna try this out. I'm gonna have to try this out on guys on the same server. But yeah, man, tell me what you guys think. This is my Black Squirtle Squad build. Killer D out.